so uh, good morning friends good uh, good morning uh, everyone who has uh, taken time out of their very busy schedule to join this uh, very important program that we have for this morning um, it, as you all know we are celebrating uh, the national science day tomorrow that is on the 28th of february and this is a very important day when uh, we uh, rededicate ourselves to the cause of uh, promoting scientific temper in this country and uh, since now india is uh, is in the process of going ahead and becoming a world leader in science and technology uh, it is important that we take this initiative in its right hands and hope that each and every one of us imp imbibes in one self the very kernel that is required to uh, push india towards the highest echelons of uh, being a nation uh, with a lot of people who are able to contribute in the field of uh, science and technology today it is a very important day for us because we are going to take up the very pertinent issue of how to ask the right questions from the perspective of sciences now we all ask questions when we were children we used to ask a lot of questions to our parents but as we grow up somehow or somewhere we lost that ability to question ourselves question nature question things around us now gradually it is time for us to rediscover that skill of questioning everything that we have all around us so to help us do us uh, do this very task today uh, we have a very very proficient uh, person who in fact uh, has multiple uh, hats to don including that of a, uh, a soft skill trainer a enthusiast in marathon uh, plus uh, she is also a, a very proficient person in the field of academics because she has a, a slew of academic qualifications to go with it so i am talking about none other than miss nikita bhatia who is joining us all the way from away from hyderabad she is working in a multinational organization a very prominent one indeed and um, indeed it is our good fortune that we have her today with us uh, to deliver her perspective on this very important question of how to ask the right questions from the perspective of sciences she herself being from the field of science and technology is best place to answer these very important questions i am also happy that i am joined uh, by, uh, by uh, the team at rc which rc vadagara uh, uh, dr pramila o our assistant regional director dr pravin kumara our assistant registrar uh, my colleague from igno regional center cochin uh, dr uh, jalaja kumari dr uh, uh, prasita uh, our coordinators from the study centers uh, i can uh, see at least two coordinators joining one from our uh, jdt islam study center at kolikot and uh, another coordinator uh, from um, uh, our sn college chilanur so and we are also uh, lucky that a large number of students from across the country have also joined in for a small morning uh, broadcast and therefore uh, i am sure it will be a very invigorating session with uh, lots of thoughtful points that will come across us especially because nikita bhatia also runs an excellent uh, blog in which uh, there are a lot of uh, thoughtful issues which are put forth for our consumption from time to time so without much ado let me now request uh, my uh, colleague dr uh, pravin kumara to introduce our uh, guest uh, for the day and i also welcome each and every one of you to this morning session over to you uh, dr pravin Th thank you sir. thank you sir. Uh, 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 good morning, uh, Dr. Rajeshwar. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, Nikita, ma'am, um, Dr. Pamela, and uh, everyone. Uh, uh, it takes a, a great pride in uh, introducing uh, the speaker for the day, uh, Nikita, ma'am, uh, to our uh, audience. Uh, Nikita Bhatia, madam, is presently working in Hyderabad for a multinational company as product analyst. She has eight years of experience in uh, different domains. She has done her graduation and post graduation from the University of Petroleum and Energy Studies Dehradun. She is an ardent marathon runner and loves to travel, read and write. That's it sir, from my end. 
thank you, um, uh, Dr. Praveen, for that brief but very attractive uh, introduction of our uh, guest of honor. And um, without much ado, let me uh, leave the floor open to Ms. Nikita Bhatia to take off from us and to enlighten us on this very important topic, how to ask the right questions from the perspective of sciences. Over to you, Nikita. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajesh and Dr. Praveen for that introduction. I guess it made my day. Well, I'm not a scientist and like most people and maybe some of you, I happen to be an engineer by the degree I have because at that time my parents said you have to be an engineer. I said, okay, fine. So when Dr. Rajesh asked me to do this talk first, uh, to be honest, I did not really understand what his request was. And when I understood, I was not really sure if I'm the right person to talk of anything related to science. But then I thought, why not? Maybe that's exactly what it is all about. Maybe it's all about this assumption that most of us think science is all about physics, chemistry, theorems, and formulas. It is all for the scientists, not for laymen like you and me, right? I would like to know how many of you think that it is true that science is all about the laws of physics and theorems, complicated formulas of chemistry, and only scientists, engineers, physicists, and doctors can understand it. When it comes to people like us, our brain goes zoo. How many people think that it is true that science is all for those people and not for us? I see a couple of hands raised. And till the time I was a student, I thought science is only for those who become engineers and scientists. But only when I started reading more about different people, physicists like Richard Feynman, who assisted on the nuclear bomb project during World War II, and he won a Nobel Prize for his work in quantum mechanics. Richard Dawkins, who's a well-known biologist, and he's known for his book, Selfish Gene. Abdul Kalam, an Indian scientist who worked in space science, I realized I was so wrong. Science can be for normal, regular people like you and me. It just depends on how you want to look at it. So now I would like to know what makes you believe that science is all about laws and theorems and complicated formulas of chemistry. Anybody who would like to share their thoughts on what makes you believe that it is all about theorems and formulas, laws of physics. And it is so difficult subject. Any thoughts? See, I can go on and talk, but I would like it to be interactive. And it will be great if you can also bring in some thoughts. That's how conversations happen. And that's how topics such as science also become relatable and easy. OK, if there are no thoughts, I will. Sign your, um, yeah, somebody's talking. I think uh, Shafna Ajmal has raised her hand. Uh, if you have uh, anything to share, kindly uh, unmute and uh, speak up. Okay, uh, Pooja. Okay, I saw two, uh, two raised hands, uh, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Praveen, please. Uh, Ma'am, uh, you said no. Like uh, science is. Uh, I'm one of those guys, you no, know, uh, who feel uh, who felt that uh, science and all these theorems is uh, definitely not my cup of tea. Um, uh, which I re realized during my uh, school days, and uh, that's why uh, possibly uh, the way this uh, chemistry classes go goes on. Uh, maybe I, I like uh, physics very much because I could uh, relate to it and uh, my uh, teacher was uh, uh, doing the classes in a, such a very interesting manner and uh, possibly one of the best teachers uh, for, of physics. Uh, uh, that's what uh, our uh, other uh, uh, schoolmates used to say. And even uh, I also felt the same uh, because that's the kind of way she used to prepare for the class and how to deliver it. Uh, so that it uh, it makes sense for the uh, uh, listeners that's uh, we we kids so uh, but uh, i couldn't find uh, such a kind of uh, a teacher for other science subjects maybe uh, they, they are uh, um, as good as the physics teacher also but just that uh, I, uh, the vibe did not uh, match so uh, at one point of time i decided that uh, science definitely i'm not going to make uh, make it uh, and uh, 
I opted for a commerce. When I, uh, after tenth, I opted for commerce. This definitely is one of the main reason for uh, yeah. aversion towards science. Is one of the main reason for going towards commerce. Right. Yeah. Because we think that it is a complicated subject, and our teachers are not able to bring that creativity when they are teaching. And hence, I am a very big fan of Richard Feynman, who who made it so easy to understand. But even though the uh, title of the talk says how to ask the right questions. I don't think I can teach anybody how to ask questions. I'm sure each one of us are smart enough to know when to ask the question, what to ask, and how to ask. But still, somewhere we miss doing that. I'm sure how many many people have been told by our parents or grandparents, or even Dr. Rajesh was mentioning that as a child you used to ask a lot of questions. My mom says I used to ask. Uh, why does the bird fly? Or why does the doggy not fly? Why is the boat in water and not on the road? I don't remember what answers they gave, and that's not the point. The point is, as a child, each one of us used to ask questions. Growing up, somewhere we lost that. Maybe because, like Dr. Praveen mentioned, the the topic is boring, it is difficult, the teacher is strict, or the teacher is not good. Somewhere we are scared. Is the question right? Should I be asking it? Or maybe few of us actually asked questions because the teacher was beautiful, but most of the time no. Moreover, as a part of our education system, we are given a syllabus. You study, you get marks, and then you start working. When I started working, it was a shocker. First, there was no syllabus. Everyone said, "Think out of the box, ask questions. No question is a stupid question." And I was not used to all of that. I was used to getting a curriculum, a set of questions I need to know the answers for. And even before I knew, the year was over. It was time for our annual performance review. That means exams are over, and you will definitely you will directly be given marks. Our education system itself does not leave any scope or gives that space to ask questions. I will narrate a small anecdote here. just to show that we end up doing things the way we are asked to do or told to do so there is a small girl in a village and she lives with her mother and the mother serves her fish some fried fish and she relishes it she enjoys it the next day she visits one of her friends place and there again she has fish now there she is served fish a complete fish with the head and the tail intact she likes it and then she goes back to her mother and asks why do you cut the head and the tail and not uh, just cook the body and not the entire fish and the mother says that's how my mom made it whenever you get a chance to meet your granny next time you ask her she goes to her granny and she asks why why do you cut the head and the tail and just cook the body not why not the entire fish the granny says because my pan was small it couldn't accommodate the entire fish so i had to cut it and that's how we do things we just go by what is told but never question those things on the top of it we end up thinking science is all about first second law of motion and chemical formulas they are just a tiny part of it it is more about imagination it is more about curiosity about creativity and persistence and these are the things i will be focusing on in my talk i will keep coming back to asking the right questions In the end, I will also briefly touch upon what prevents us to ask those questions and what we can do about it. And after that, I will open it up for discussion and uh, other questions. Now, I don't have any slides to show you and bore you to death. I only have stories and anecdotes, like I just shared, about people uh, who are renowned scientists and what has been their approach to their discoveries. And when I talk about imagination. it would be unfair on my part i've already spoken about richard feynman if i don't mention more about him uh, one curious character and a person or a professor who has who was admired for his capability to make things fun to learn and understand maybe like dr praveen's professor who made things interesting to learn and understand so let's try to follow his footsteps and see how imagination can make science interesting And let's uh, start by imagining maybe an atom in a drop of water, and ask a basic question: How does a drop of water look like? 
it's a very simple question. How does a drop of water look like? You can use the chat feature also if, in case you are not able to unmute. This is another problem of asking questions. People don't want to answer or maybe people don't want to think even those simple basic questions. And if you don't question, if you don't answer, it becomes very boring and science itself becomes very boring. But anyways, I will come back to the drop of water. The, I started with a basic question of how does it look like? What happens in a tiny drop of water? And in a tiny drop of water, the atoms attract each other. They like to be next to each other. And they want to have as many drops or atoms close to them. Now the atoms that are at the surface have only partners on one side together. On the bottom, they have atoms of water. And on the side, they have air. So they're just trying to get in. If you've traveled in a Mumbai local train or heard about it, it's just like that. People keep moving fast here and there and they want to have as many partners as possible. And the guys at the edge or at the door are very unhappy, they're nervous and they try to get in. This is exactly what happens in a drop of water. It becomes a tight ball instead of a flat and that's what surface tension is. Tendency to shrink in minimum surface area possible. So the next time when you see a water droplet on a leaf, you will start imagining things. And that's how you can first start with imagination and then come to the questions, okay, what it is like, why is it happening, what can be the theory behind it. And there, that's where then you start researching on it maybe. At the same time, it is also happening that some atoms are leaving the surface. So the water is slowly disappearing and eventually it disappears. It's as simple as that. And when you start with that kind of an imagination, you can come to asking the right questions. How I was taught back in school, this is the definition of service tension. This is the formula. These are the units. You come, you just learn it. Exam may, you answer it. And then it's all done. There is no place for imagination. It's a beautiful world around us. The more you fuel your imagination, the more interesting it becomes. Questions like, are things truly the way they seem to be? What goes behind the scene? And what will happen if I try something differently? What will happen if you ask the question right now and then we get into a discussion and start exploring some topic? I don't understand why people are so scared of sharing their own thoughts. And imagination can fuel things better and can make it more interesting. Let your imagination go wild. Ask what it is that you want to do. What is the problem at hand? Why does it excite you? Why, at first place, is it a problem? And then it comes to solution. Our brains are so tuned to finding answers from the theory that we've been told or just directly dump, jump into the solution. But why at the first place is it a problem? When I train for my marathons and you spoke at length about marathons, I'll not go there. But when I am into that zone or when I'm about to give up, I visualize, I imagine the finish line and the what, why, how, everything dissolves. Imagination is very, very powerful. Only definitions, regular syllabus will not help. And I will tell you, Richard Feynman also won the Nobel Prize. It started from his imagination. He was in a food court. Somebody, just for the fun of it, threw a plate across the food, uh, across the food court. There was a small emblem on the plate. As the plate rotated, the emblem also rotated. And he observed that the emblem is rotating faster than the uh, plate or it appears to rotate faster. And that's where he started asking questions. Why does it happen? What is going behind the scenes? What, what is going, what, what can I do about it? And he start, how can I understand it? And then he started putting things together and ultimately ended up win, winning, winning the Nobel Prize for quantum mechanics. That's about imagination. I also spoke about uh, creativity and innovation. Who comes to your mind when I ask to name a person or a creative person? 
who is a creative person maybe someone like uh, da vinci okay da vinci mostly painters musicians etc this is what comes to our mind when we talk about creative people but what about the team of engineers or let's say elon musk or engineers who are trying to make the design of a spacecraft or the engineer trying to make a car engine operate more efficiently creativity is not only the domain of painters singers etc it is equally applicable in domain of science creativity is a simple idea any new idea which can solve a problem or any object that is useful or new that can mean composing a piece of music that is uh, pleasing to your ear or a painting or it can also mean dreaming up a solution to challenge being encountered by a challenge that is being encountered by people a lot of kids think that science is only about knowledge about collection of facts they need to memorize but if instead science can also be a process of learning observing and gathering information about the way how nature works then there is more room for creativity and the best example i can uh, think of of a person who fused science and creativity together i think it was uh, steve jobs apple brand in itself is synonymous with creating uh, or or building up creative product designs and most of us know after uh, steve jobs had dropped out of college so when he dropped out of college uh, he decided to pursue call, uh, classes just that interest him not because he was supposed to follow a curriculum and one of the classes he took was a class on calligraphy now he was going around in his campus every poster or every label on the drawer they were very beautifully hand calligraphed because he had dropped out and he didn't had to take any normal classes don't think i'm trying to tell you or convincing you to drop out of college that's not the message what i'm trying to say is just do things for the fun of them so he decide or just for the interest because calligraphy interested him at that time he decided to take a class in calligraphy to learn how it is He learned about different fonts, different typefaces, about varying amount of uh, spaces between different letter combinations, and he found it fascinating. He had no idea of what practical application it could be in his life. But then, ten years later, when they were designing their first Macintosh computer, it all came back. And Macintosh computers are known for their beautiful typography. That is how his creativity was. fused with technology when he was designing macintosh computers and i think with more and more focus on uh, specializations our boundaries for imagination and being creative are collapsing you become a specialist in some field and block all other fields to yourself even if steve jobs would have done that that he just focuses on computer and mobile technology i don't think he would have been so creative in designing those things so maybe that jack of all trades who knows a lot about a lot of things is the potential master of creativity but then how can you feel that creative power in you it is as simple as uh, having diverse life experiences and i will quote steve jobs only he said if you are going to make connections which are innovative you have to not have the same bag of experiences as everybody else does because then you will end up making the same connections and then you'll not be innovative so if you just go by what people are saying or what is the world looking like at face value you will never be able to be creative and that is true because if everyone has the same experience how can you expect us to be creative and again coming back to steve jobs He was a very big fan of Bob Dylan, a a very famous uh, musician. That's what led him to create iTunes. So let's see how he is infusing his life experiences with technology and then creating those things. He visited India in mid 1970s and he was influenced by Buddhism. And Buddhism is known for its very simple, clean ideologies that drove his passion to design what. 
that was something very simple, clean, uncluttered, and aesthetically compelling. And that's how the design of iMac, iPhone, iPad came. And Steve Jobs was most famously known. He was not a technology nerd. He was not a computer geek. He did not spend hours writing complex algorithms or operating systems. But he was passionate about the potential of personal computers and mobile technology. So while creativity and science can go hand in hand, it is not all about technology. It's about the idea behind why a product is made. And Steve Jobs started exactly with that. What is the need of the people that I can solve? Let's just take an example of um, iPod. He knew people listen to music and how it would be to have so much of music together. So that was the need people had. And he started with that what? Why would it be a success in the market? Because there is a demand for it. And then what can I do about it? He started from the what, the why, and then he moved to uh, solutioning the problem, which is why. And then applying your scientific caliber to find those answers to create something which can solve those problems. So science can fuel creative solutions and nobody, I think, better than Steve Jobs did it. Well, until now, I have spoken about uh, curiosity and imagination. Uh, I gave examples of uh, Steve Jobs and Richard Feynman. And asking questions like, what is the problem? Why is it happening? And what can be done about it? There's one more quality I need to highlight uh, before I move on. And that is the quality of perseverance. And we were talking about consistency when we were discussing just before we started the session about uh, cycling and different uh, sports activities. We were talking about consistency. So perseverance and consistency are the qualities you need to ask those questions also. And one scientist who beautifully personified it in spite of all the challenges he came across was Dr. A.P. Abdul Kalam. He rose from being a normal, regular layman to being one of those renowned scientists. His house had no electricity, so he studied under dim street lights. His teaching teacher, his mathematics teacher, told him that he must reach before uh, sunlight and after taking a bath. And Abdul Kalam was never late, not even for once. As a student, while designing a low-level aircraft, uh, his teacher told him that the design is not good enough. He persisted. He was given a deadline saying that if it is not done, his scholarship would be terminated. He redid the entire design. And of course, there is scientific caliber going behind it. But because he had that confidence, that persistence to solve that problem, he was able to do it. When he could not be a pilot because his dream was to become a pilot, he said, if I can't fly aircrafts, I can at least make them. His first major project in ISRO, it was a failure, but he accepted that failure in 1979. And a year later in 1980, they launched it successfully. And he ended up playing a leading role in development of uh, India's missiles and nuclear programs. So creativity, imagination, innovation, etc., they're all good. But if we can persist or if we can have the courage to keep asking those questions we used to as a child, we will be able to find those answers also. If we are consistent enough in our search for those answers, it will be easier to ask those questions also. I will tell you one more story about uh, World War II. And uh, I will share my screen just to give you a better understanding of it. Uh, during World War II, the U.S. military, they wanted to minimize the number of aircrafts that were lost to enemy fire. For this, the researchers studied the damage that happened in bomber aircrafts that returned from the mission. Of course, they can study only the aircrafts that returned. They cannot study the aircrafts that were lost. So they studied those aircrafts and then they came, they were trying to ask those questions and understand what they can do so that the loss of aircrafts is can be minimized. So I will share you, show you a picture of one of those aircrafts that returned. And if you would like to get more involved in the session, I would like to you to tell me where would you think that uh, 
and armor should be put uh, i will show yeah that armor should be put so that if you are able to see my screen where do you think in this picture so the red dots they show uh, where the bullets have hit the aircraft and the spaces the white spaces show where the bullets have not hit the aircraft so where according to you would you put an armor so that the loss of aircraft is minimized a simple question the problem statement is we want to minimize the number of aircrafts lost to fire or attack where should the armor be placed any thoughts are you able to see my screen Yes, yes, it's uh, visible. Yes, it yes, is visible. Yes. Okay. So, where would you place the armor? The red dot show bullets. Anybody? Uh, any thoughts? When you look at the picture, the bullets are there. The aircraft is there. Where would you put the layer or the armor which can protect the? Aircraft when it is in the air. Nowhere, or you just let the plane go. I'm not able to stop my screen share. it should be i feel somewhere uh, which uh, uh, prevents a critical hit that is uh, a hit which can uh, really uh, make the whole uh, aircraft dysfunctional maybe uh, near the engine or near the uh, uh, fan or where uh, which uh, something which uh, really makes the uh, aircraft move uh. or uh, function Okay, so you're saying on the engine, right? Yeah, on Is the engine. Uh, yeah, engine or the uh, blades. Either way, <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but uh, maybe. <laughs> okay, I'm not able to stop my screen share. Can uh, somebody help, or you can help with that? Uh, I think you will have to do it from your end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's okay. <laughs> One second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we are more or less uh, closer to the answer. At the first look, we go by what is the problem there, what we are able to see. And uh, the U.S. military, they had approached a statistical uh, person, a statistician. Uh, his name was Wall, and the U.S. military thought that wherever there is maximum damage, we should put the armor there. But what the statistician said that. the places where uh, there is no damage that's how the airplane has been able to survive and those are the aircrafts that have returned so that's why they ended up coming to a conclusion that okay we have to put the armor at places where the damage is not there and those are the like uh, miss uh, dr rajesh mentioned those are the engines because we are studying aircrafts that came back not the ones that return and we don't have that data so looking at the data we have it is all right for the bomber aircraft to take damage anywhere on the surface except on the engine to return safely and that's what they did so in decision making the error to overlook things that are hidden behind the veil has all has to be avoided as well we are full of biases what do you do while purchasing things from the internet how do you go about uh, purchasing things from the internet what is the first thing you do when you look for a product on amazon and uh, before you purchase it what 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 is the decision process that goes um, consumer review consumer reviews and what kind of reviews do you see uh, basically uh, first the negative reviews as to okay. where where the uh, fallacy is like then uh, i typically move on to the positive reviews and then the second thing that i look for is basically whether it is the grand sale period or something of that sort <laughs> so i get uh, the product at a minimum uh, price 
and thirdly also maybe uh, if time permits if it's a high value uh, purchase then i may also go in for uh, some kind of uh, uh, local market survey also so can i can okay. so that i can just see uh, how it physically looks like but so it's it like uh, yeah. basically reviews and uh, the price yes so you do your uh, due diligence and you do a thorough research but most of the people like you mentioned they go and read the reviews of the product while good your reviews are useful it is the bad or critical reviews that we think they reveal more and we buy the product going by the bad reviews we make a decision whether to buy or not to buy but that's not always the case many who are reasonably happy or satisfied with the product they don't take the pain to write a product review online so we don't bother to ask see the whole picture do our research around the product i'm glad uh, mr rajesh he does it but not many of us do it we we just go by the reviews we don't collect the facts and the data and and we just go by our biases or by judgment the scientific inquiry it is more about being aware of our own bias about our own judgments about asking is the thing that i'm seeing really how it is is there anything hidden behind the scenes observing the world around us collecting the data analyzing the data and then testing it against your own beliefs and judgments and i think this is the most difficult part that when you observe something you are conditioned to think in a certain way and when you are uh, you have to test certain things against your own beliefs it becomes very difficult and when the data or uh, what your observation has been is contrary to your original belief it is also important in the end to be open minded to alter your long held beliefs so observe be aware of your own bias and judgment only then you will be able to open up your mind to ask questions and open up your yourself to different conversations and questions now i've spoken about different things but to be honest uh, i don't think i've spoken anything new or out of the world until now you already know these things or at least would have heard about them words like creativity imagination innovation persistence they like cows on the streets of mathura they are everywhere in schools colleges corporates they are the mantras of corporates i would say every other day we hear about innovation about creativity and phrases like ask questions think out of the box ask how it can be resolved like they they are common sense questions they have just been put into frameworks like design thinking and in the end i spoke about being aware of your own biases and judgments and being open to accept different ideas but now my question even after all this is what stops us from imagination what stops us from asking questions like what if what would happen if i try this what stops us or what stops you from exploring different ideas what stops you from finding out hi how what why behind your own ideas what is it that stops you from asking those questions questions are very simple what is it why is it happening where is it happening when is it happening what can i do about it what do i know about it what do i not know about it these are very logical common sense but then what stops us from asking those logical questions also what is stopping you from sharing your thoughts or putting it in chat or what what is it i think one of the things uh, that uh, most of us face is the certain uh, fear that uh, if you are caught on the wrong foot then uh, what will the other people think about that <laughs> that's uh, that's i feel one of the reasons and second thing uh, uh, which is uh, quite associated with this is the fact that uh, people are mostly risk averse uh, they feel uh, risk in um, taking risk in either even questioning uh, could uh, mean something negative towards them uh, that kind of a risk averseness is uh, seen throughout the society and i feel that's one of the reasons why uh, we are uh, uh, not uh, uh, of course we have a large number of startups and many other things but in spite of that uh, we are not going uh, full throttle forward because of this uh, risk averse nature of our society 
and uh, and one, uh, I can also share one uh, personal experience of ours. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, when I was in Cochin, uh, we thought about starting this um, uh, a certificate program in environmental sustainability on the online mode. So the uh, uh, see. Uh, at that time, many uh, negative thoughts, first of all, came uh, into our minds. What if it is not accepted? Uh, uh, we are uh, planning something new. The questions uh, asked in that course are uh, something different from what you have in the mainstream uh, courses. Uh, the, the approach is different. So uh, whether there will be uh, acceptance, there will be success, so on and so forth. So all these questions, in fact, even before beginning the course, these were the questions that first came uh, to the minds of more, uh, many of us including the team members and I, uh, a couple of my team members in that endeavor are already here in this uh, session maybe they can corroborate later on so, but uh, once we overco uh, overcame those thoughts that is we, when we thought uh, that no anyway it is worth uh, pursuing and worth trying out then things became uh, more and more clear in the initial phase this fear was something that uh, started us so uh, I think uh, that is one uh, thing that uh, more, more than often happens with us. I am so glad that you you, you hit the nail right at the point. And, uh, and thank you for sharing that experience. It is the fear. It is the fear of failure. What if I fail? What if the course doesn't is not accepted the way we are thinking? It is also the fear of being judged. What will people say? And then fear of doubt. What if I'm not able to figure it out? How will I do it? And then lack of reason, fear of not being able to find the reason. Why should I even be doing it? Why should the course even be launched? Or fear of not being accepted by your peers. People will not accept the idea. What will people think? And then fear of getting into arguments. Many a times I don't put forward ideas in my office also. or I don't ask questions because I have that fear of arguments. I just don't want to get into any argument. And finally, it is the fear of speaking up for taking your own stand. Until now, I've spoken so many things. If there's one thing I would request all of you to take from this talk, it would be this. Forget all that fear. Instead of asking the question, what if I fail? Ask, what if I don't try it? If today, Dr. Rajesh and his team wouldn't have launched the course, it would have been a missed opportunity for so many students who are now pursuing the course. Instead of saying, what will people say? Ask the question, what will I tell people when I succeed? And success is not only about recognition, about rewards or number. You can define your success parameter and then go by it. So instead of saying, what if I fail? Ask, what am I going to tell people when I see that finish line, and I do this very often in my marathons, what if I fail to achieve my target time? But it is not about that. I might have set a target time, but what am I going to tell people when I cross that finish line and, and I have that smile on my face? Define your own success parameter. And instead of asking the question, what if I'm unable to figure it out? Accept life is like that. You will never be able to figure it out. You will never be able to ask those right questions. You will definitely ask the wrong questions. But so what? Have the courage to try something else. Have the courage to explore. Because Steve Jobs had that courage to explore, he became what he is today. There is no reason or why behind what you want to do it. Just do it for the fun of it. You never know what will come out of it. Again, like Steve Jobs, he did it. And let go of, uh, in the end, let go of your biases, have the strength to have your beliefs challenged, and in the end, have the confidence to communicate, to speak up for yourself. Otherwise, people will always question, and if you don't speak for, speak up for yourself, nobody else will. Even Dr. Rajesh had approached me to even give this talk, I had so much of fear. I, like I said, I'm not a scientist. I just happen to be having a degree in engineering. But there are so many things that go behind the scenes to becoming the person you are. And if I hadn't spoken up today, maybe I wouldn't have ever had the confidence to even talk about a subject like this. Well, in a fact, lot of uh, I think uh, our colleague, Dr. Pramila, uh, she had raised her hand. Maybe she can also uh, put her views. Madam? 
Dr. Pramila? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. You had raised I your hand in between. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But that point is also uh, explained, sir. That is the method of teaching in the, our country is also a reason for that. We know that a child at the age of three to four asks 300 to 400 questions in a day. But the number of questions, when he joined in class first year date, the number of questions will decrease because the, the teachers never accept the questions from the side of the student. That is the reason. The, the question will arise only by, by a creative student. And the, that question is very difficult for the teacher to answer. That is the, I think that is the reason when the number of questions asked by a person will decrease when he develops. That's the point, sir. Madam, that's my opinion regarding this. Thank you. Sir. And that is very true. We are not given that space to express, to ask those questions. Even simple questions like, why is it right? Why is it not right? You're just told this is how it is and you go by it. That's all. The society also doesn't give us space to express or to ask those questions. Well, a lot of heavy talk, I guess. To summarize, I will say, follow your curiosity. Let lose your imagination and creativity. Persevere to find answers to all those questions like what, how, why, etc. Be aware, spend that time to understand your biases and have them challenged. And in the end, let go of all the fear that has been holding you back to ask those questions. Asking questions is not the tough job. Having that confidence or letting go of that fear to raise your voice and ask that question is the most important thing. And I'm sure each one of you will be able to figure out those questions. And as long as you are able to say it, you'll get, as long as you are able to perceive on it, you'll be able to find the right answers also. Thank you. And I will now open up if there are any questions or anything more to be discussed. And I'll hand it over back to Dr. Rajesh. Thank you. Thank you, Nikita. It was a wonderful session. In fact, um, uh, free of all jargons, free of all uh, scientific uh, paradigms. Uh, it was a wonderful session where uh, things which matter the most, the basics of all questioning, that came to the fore. And the examples you gave were also really vibrant uh, as to uh, kindle a thought in each of us. I'm sure there will be many further uh, thoughts and discussion points that will come up in the uh, in uh, maybe the next uh, uh, 15 to 20 minutes that we have with us so uh, let us open up the uh, floor to questions and uh, comments i say a lot of, and uh, uh, i just uh, made a mistake of uh, not mentioning uh, the name of uh, our uh, senior rd colleague uh, from uh, jaipur dr pamtha bhatia who has joined the session welcome uh, welcome ma'am welcome to the session Thank you, Rajesh. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you for joining. Um, any any thoughts on the presentation, ma'am? It's been great listening to her. And uh, of course, as you said, that it was really a practical session where we could relate to it because even me, I'm not a student of science, uh, studied administration. So, but still, we could relate with it. And um, I think the others who are listening to it might have been felt the same. It was really a great experience. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. And uh, in fact, uh, that's uh, that's the reason why I thought that uh, Nikita is the best person to deliver his this session. Uh, because uh, if I if we have called a person from uh, say one of the institution, uh, educational or academic institution, there would have been lot of uh, academic jargon coming into the uh, discourse. Yeah. Uh, which uh, we definitely wanted to avoid and uh, we wanted a practical session which uh, Nikita has so uh, ably and jo so generously delivered for us. Yeah, and the examples also that she gave, we could relate to them and uh, Exactly, really it was a wonderful session. <laughs> uh, we also have our colleagues from uh, RC uh, uh, Kuchin, Dr. Uh, Jalaja Kumari. Are you online, man? Yeah. Welcome. Thank you very much for calling me uh, by name. And I am very much happy to see Nikita Bhatia and the relation to, you know, uh, that is a wonderful day, I think, having a young scientist, very enthusiastic 
young energetic scientific attitude person who was leading this session this morning and uh, a lot of uh, thoughts were coming through our mind when we were because especially we were teacher educators dr pramila and me and uh, because a uh, questioning uh, we were thinking that uh, this was the best method for teaching well at the from the time of uh, socrates onwards the socratic method was adopting everywhere especially and uh, even though he is a philosopher actually philosophy is the mother of all sciences we, we cannot forget it so the best method for learning is questioning only and the skill of questioning itself is a particular area for us for teacher educators we are giving training to students for uh, different types of questioning methods and also it's very interesting for us and um, nowadays i think even though we are uh, in the verge of implementation of um, national uh, our new policy of education 2020 skill development is the uh, uh, i think uh, the um, basic thing of our uh, new uh, educational recommendations this skill is based on creativity and uh, science the philosophy is also actually science because i told already mother of science but before that more than that when the disciplines becomes scientific uh when it is becoming practical isn't it darshanas our upanishads our um, uh, vedas and everything are implementing in a practical way then it becomes a science actually spiritual science is also there isn't it so when it is becoming the part of our life and when it is becoming the uh, a, a, the, a discipline of a man's utility in their day to day life that is what science so without questioning in kerala one kerala shastra sahitya parishad is there kerala shastra sahitya parishad is a, um, a community there are people who are always there to develop scientific attitude and temper among the school students and uh, um, youngsters so many books are written that in malayalam it is endu kond endu kond endu kond means why 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 so from this our creativity constructivism starts so this may be i think uh, this may be an opportunity for the students and the participants to think why 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 and how 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 uh, to develop scientific attitude and uh, uh, nikita patia was telling about the uh, cutting your fish and everything always we have to think that even in our kitchen every activity is based on some scientific theories but without knowing that we are practicing we are doing but we have the practical knowledge but we don't know the theory behind that so without science without scientific questions no innovations will be developed so in with that thought uh, i am sharing my happiness uh, being the part of this one and uh, thankful to rajesh sir also for telling about our uh, course details our efforts and everything happy to say uh, once again nikita patia i was really enjoying because my daughter is also of your age i was feeling that so thank you very much and uh, bless god bless you for all your developments in your way ahead thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much thank you thank you ma'am uh, in fact uh, talking about um, cooking and all that uh, the more you become methodological uh, the worse cook you become that's my personal experience <laughs> so uh, i don't know how, uh, how far uh, i can relate that to my cooking of course uh, better cooks are there around so maybe that is also innovative method sir yeah also a method yeah that, that's what it is about see we are taught okay step one step two step three step four step five but then if you keep following steps how will you think different Exactly. And that's what uh, has been the jargon everywhere. Think different. Think out of the box. When I started working, think different. Think out of the box. How, how do I start thinking different? Uh, suddenly, until now I had a curriculum. Now I don't have anything. So exactly. it is a skill to be developed. Yeah, exactly. and a lot of inhibitions to be shed. 
Yeah, very true. <laughs> and let me hope I can uh, shut some of my inhibitions when it comes to cooking. Uh, not a succeed in doing that, but maybe in future there is always a scope for improvement. <laughs> uh, we also have um, our assistant, our regional director, uh, senior regional director, madam from uh, RC Kuchin, uh, Dr. Dorothy, ma'am. Would you like to uh, make any comment or raise any question? Okay, uh, Dr. Prasita from RC Kuchin. Sir, I actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please. Uh, I sent a message that uh, generally airplane and all is not touched by ladies. The taboo is there. Madam broke it. And I appreciate the presentation style relating to the content also. Every time uh, Madam post a question, uh, it was more curious of what she will say for the answer and how she will relate to it. It mattered a lot. Uh, the presentation style was very, um, very interesting and also kept uh, the uh, audience captive to the content. And I appreciate the um, content relating to the presentation style and how in between us, uh, Rajesh sir was also contributing and it made it really interactive and to be remembered forever. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your uh, very uh, kind thoughts. Uh, on the women, uh, on aerospace or aeronautics not being for women, Kalpana Chavla is an example. She was an Indian and it is yeah, unfortunate that she... she... That is what, even I am fond of uh, automobiles and uh, this all these aircraft, so I was very happy that uh, you cited those uh, <laughs> examples. In fact, in World War II, there were three black women who came out, who designed uh, fighter planes uh, in World War II. And there's a book uh, on them, uh, Hidden Figures. Uh, there's a movie also, I think, and I'm very keen to read it. They were not allowed to even uh, you know, sleep in bunker beds like other males were. But then, even then, they persisted. And they made those fighter planes a success. There were three black women who did that. That so is it's true. Not, yeah. That is true. Even even in our day-to-day -day life, if you relate it, I mean, uh, what do you call, sleeping in cars is not allowed even for women nowadays. When you have to wait for four or five hours to pursue the next journey and you're held up, uh, immediately a call will come from home or uh, friends and relatives, please book into the nearest hotel. Don't stay uh, there. I mean, don't stay in the car, don't wait in the car, etc. So, um, I mean, I could relate it. But still, we, uh, people, there are people who encourage us to move ahead. And uh, I personally feel every hurdle is to cross. And when we turn back, those challenges will be one of the milestones which we come across. Thank you for sharing this experience. It immediately related to this. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And uh, there, there is also something that I would like to share. Uh, Nikita, uh, before the uh, start of this session, we were discussing so many things with uh, Nikita. And uh, one of the things that she was uh, thinking about is to run a marathon from RC Kuchin to RC Vadagara. <laughs> yeah, so we are looking part forward of to it. That. Yes, we'll be part yes. of it. Because basically, I'm also an athlete also, and I'll also take part. Wow. Yes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So we, uh, we yes. will have uh, two or three uh, persons running from RC Kuchin to RC Vadagara. Yes. Good. That will be great. For me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are also <laughs> running there. Like youngsters can, but uh, people like us cannot. Okay. Like me, me, me. Me only I use. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, you can give a moral support, ma'am. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And also maybe in between uh, some water and uh, cold drinks and all that to yes. make their course, travel course. easy. That can also be done. Uh, Prasita? Also motor time. rally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because all this related, you know, it makes us. Actually, yes, Maruti, uh, when, it was, when this pandemic was coming back to normal and new normal situation were evolving, uh, they were encouraging the Maruti, um, uh, what do you call the service centers, they were encouraging the women uh, uh, to move along to tell that it is safe now yeah. from one pin code to the other 
just with the message it's safe but new normal situation is uh, one of the dreams yesterday which has come true with exactly. that logo yeah Very so similarly it can be yes yes ma'am that's something that we will actively pursue with uh, nikita and maybe in future it will come out in a practical sense yes, sure so, so prasita yeah. thank you thank you sir thank you thank you nikita for your excellent uh, style of presentation i must say very uh, nicely with uh, such uh, examples you have uh, explained the concept of science uh, and creativity and innovative thinking uh, one thing which struck me was uh, being a science student myself once uh, we had a class in which our um, professor he just asked one question to us and the question was what will happen when a stone falls in a well this was a question basically asked to us and i remember the answers uh, which uh, we as a student at that point of time were thinking like it will uh, like uh, it will fall into the well it will create ripples it will create waves and it will create sound so all such answers were coming to our mind in general so he was looking for a particular answer i, I suppose when he asked that question and we were all very curious to know what is the answer for that and uh, i don't know whether <laughs> you people i'm not asking this question to you all but simply i'll just tell the answer the answer which he was looking for was the stone will become wet <laughs> something so different <laughs> which at that point of time we were not able to think at that point of that that stone will once it, uh, we put it in a well it will become wet so this was the answer he was looking for so basically what he was trying to explain to us is that you have to think something similar that is called logic this is what he was trying to explain to us and for being a good scientist or something you need to have that logic always in mind so this is one of the examples during my <laughs> studying days which still uh, i remember and when nikita was taking this lecture I, and she was asking such questions i immediately remembered that uh, question which he had posed to us so thank you nikita for uh sharing uh, all these things and one more very interesting part of your presentation which i felt was about that airplane which you had drawn and the bullets uh, <laughs> you had shown in red dots i uh, in fact my son is 12 year old and he's so fond of airplanes and he draws so many variety of airplanes and he always uh, when you drew that airplane exactly came to my mind my son draws ditto same uh, only the bullets were missing from that and uh, i was thinking if he was here he would have answered that question in a much better way than i could think of so thank you nikita for sharing your uh, experiences and uh, for creating uh, for installing in us the curiosity and questioning which i think we are losing at some point of time so a very nice and innovative presentation thank you so much thank you so much prasanna thank you prasita and uh, hopefully uh, you can also join for the future uh, marathon <laughs> that we are planning everybody is getting for a marathon <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> uh, thank you prasita um, anyone else who wishes to chip in with uh, their thoughts or ideas uh, uh, quite a few uh, people in the audience so anyone uh, who wishes to share their ideas or thoughts can uh, definitely unmute yourselves and uh, contribute uh, to the session okay uh, i think uh, things were crystal clear the way um, uh, our uh, expert uh, ms nikita explained them uh, to each of us so there are no further uh, discussion points or thoughts so um, i feel uh, it is now time uh that we uh, bring the uh, program towards its conclusion uh in fact uh, nikita had given us time for around 1 hour that is till 12 uh, we have exceeded it by uh, around 5 minutes i hope uh, we can uh, have another 5 minutes or so uh, with which uh, we can end it uh, so may now request my colleague dr uh, uh, pramila o assistant regional director igno rail center godagara to sum, uh, sum up the session and also uh, propose a formal vote of thanks Thank you, sir. Good afternoon to Ms. Nikita Bhatia, the product analyst in the multinational company in Hyderabad, and our regional director of R C Vadagara, Dr. M. Jagdish, senior direct regional director of the Bhatia, ma'am, uh, assistant registrar, D. Pravin Kumara, 
Dr. Jalaja Gumari and to proceed the Unik Krishnan, AIDs from Regional Center Kochin, and also our Senior Regional Director, Dr. Dorothy from Kochin RC, our coordinators and all other uh, LSE functionaries in RC Vadagara. Very good, good afternoon to one and all. We are very happy to be here with you, ma'am, Nikita, ma'am, in this afternoon, uh, who made a very attractive session on the, the topic, how to ask questions in a scientific prospectus. Ma'am, you already taken the session, how to ask the right questions. The topic for the presentation is all very innovative and the style of presentation is also very, uh, very creative and attractive. That is the main point to be mentioned here. And she explained about the role of creativity and uh, uh, innovation in the field of development of science and engineering, and the role of played by the creativity in the development of science and technology, and also in the field of engineering. The other point she explained is the role of imagination played in making the learning process of science more interesting with uh, her own examples, which is very interesting to us also. As mentioned by Ms. Siddha, ma'am, a child of uh, three years or four years asks many questions each day to the person who is around us. But when we grew, the number of questions decreases. It shows that a child learned the nature of the world by observation and by asking questions. If we, if we can be able to maintain that tendency, then we can more productive in our nature. What prevent or stop us from asking questions is the first, the next point explained by Nikita ma'am, and the fear or our thought about the acceptance of our questions from other persons around us or who is uh, taking the session or the our peers. That is the uh, barrier which prevent us from asking more questions. Yes, it is the reason and it is uh, our, our we have to practice asking more and questions when we think about an invention or scientific invention the question raised in the mind of a scientist is the reason for our invention example we know that any scientist like newton also he invented the gravitational force also the question which arises in his mind is the reason to invent and gravitational force or asking this principle anything in the field of uh, science and at this time madam we are very grateful to you for your session on this topic which is the express i we express our deep gratitude to you for spending your valuable time in spe in spite of your tight schedule ma'am we express our gratitude to dr mamda Bedia. The senior regional director, Dr. M. Dajes, senior RD of RC Vadagada, um, Dr. Dorothy Mem, the senior regional director of uh, Igno RC Vadagada, Sori Kuchin, and Dr. Jalajagumari, uh, Dr. Prasida Unikrishnan, Dr. P. B. Praveen Kumara, the assistant registrar of RC Vadagada, Sri Dejish, Sri Rafi Sir, who are the coordinators of Igno Regional Center Vadagada. Madara Study Centers and all other participants, students, we express once again, express our heartfelt thank, gratitude to all who participated in this function. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for uh, uh, the uh, very nice uh, vote of thanks that you have given us. We formally bring this session to a close and I shall uh, stop the recording now. Thank you.